the next patient is 63 years old uh, lady with amyloidosis causing uh, renal failure. She's on hemodialysis uh, since 2014 via TDC. She had a kidney transplantation that rejected in, two, in 2015 and returned to dialysis, hemodialysis via TDC again. She had a basilic vent transposition, as you can see here, in the forearm. This is the fistula. As you know, we do the, the, this surgery with skip incision. You can hardly see the incision here. And you can, you can, feel the, 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 you can see the fistula here. This is a puncture site, arterial puncture sites, and the venous puncture sites, and the fistula is draining to the uh, axillary vein here. The major problem in this kind of fistulas is that the, uh, there is a narrowing in 30 to 40 percent of the patient as stenosis in the swing zone in the axilla, and it's very important to 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 remember when you examine this fistula. Okay, she already had a brachial cephalic fistula, all that occluded many years ago. So let's see what we can see in ultrasound. On examination, you can see that there is no emptying of the puncture site while elevating her arm. And there is, if you can notice to my finger, you can see pulsation. My finger moves like that. That's mean, and this also. That mean that there is a recurrent stenosis in the swings of stenosis here. We already have done uh, once an angioplasty of this area. Okay, let's see what we can do with the ultrasound machine. Okay, we start again with the anastomosis. Okay, we start with the grayscale here, as you can see. This is the brachial artery, and this is the transposed basilic vein here. You can see that the anastomosis is relatively narrow. Take a, another view of that, another angle. You can see this is the brachial artery, and this is the cephalic vein, the transposed basilic vein, sorry. And a narrow anastomosis, we usually never take the main basilic vein, but rather we take the branch of the distal basilic vein to the anastomosis, keeping the fistula in relatively low, for, low flow. You can appreciate the high flow in the anastomosis. You can see up to six meters per second. I will take some pictures for the record. And then we continue, continue with the fistula. We go again to the transverse view. You can see the brachial artery here and the arterial puncture site. We follow the vein again to see the venous site now and the brachial artery. Below here is the venous site, the brachial artery, quite developed, a nice venous, venous puncture site. And now we can go back, go again to longitudinal view and we follow the vein up to the axilla. And you can see, this is the swing zone. I'll try to play with that something a little bit.
now we can see that it's not you should never push and with force uh, the transducer otherwise you will have a artificial stenosis you see there is a stenosis there is a lot of turbulence in this area suggesting that she has uh, some kind of stenosis here if we take the color flow we can it's, we can see we can appreciate the stenosis is not that significant but significance of stenosis is counted only by bl prolonged bleeding from the puncture site. Do you have a prolonged bleeding from the puncture site? Is there a dimum No, no, no. The patient says she doesn't have a prolonged bleeding. She doesn't have a high pressure, high venous pressure. And how much comes about the medamemla? It takes less than 10 minutes uh, for the puncture site. Uh, to to uh, stop bleeding. That's I mean, that's quite good. No need now for doing angioplasty. Oh, and this we follow now the axillary vein. As you can see here, quite wide and nice. Now let's measure the flow. Measuring the flow, as you saw before, in another patient, it's very simple. We take a straight part in the mid buccal artery like this one, put the Doppler gate inside, in the middle of the artery. Zoom always helps. Of course, we need to invert. Okay, all we need to do with the Philips machine is just measuring the diameter. It's so simple. Take one heart cycle or three heart cycle. It's the same. And the flow is about 900 milliliter per minute without prolonged bleeding from the puncture site yet. One of the most important things in dialysis access is measuring also the flow in the uh, in the forearm, always some of the patients may have a still syndrome, uh, in particular, particularly those patients with uh, diabetes or something like that, but she is not. We know she is having renal failure due to uh, amyloidosis. I already measure her, her pulse, and they are quite good. This is the radial artery. You can feel a good pulse here and a nice flow. Look at the ulnar artery. It's a little bit calcified. The flow is quite the flow is quite good, but you can see, you can appreciate here. There's a, some calcification in the artery, but it's very good. So what, what have we got here? We have here the buccal artery. We have the transposed basilic vein with the arterial site, and then the venous site. And then we have a mild to moderate swing zone stenosis here. And we have a flow of 900 milliliter per minute. And we have a nice pulse here in the radial artery and ultra, ulnar artery. OK, we just follow up the patient. We'll examine her for we study within three months. And that's it.